What's up, y'all? So back in the day, I used to use bentonite clay to detangle my hair. And I used to do that about every two to three months. At the time, it felt like the only thing that would really, really get rid of tangles because before, it used to take me about an hour after washing my hair, after conditioning it to get tangles out. And I was so frustrated. I felt like I had so much shedding. And I just said, you know what? It's time for a bentonite clay treatment. At the time, my style rhythm was to get braids, to do two strand twists with my real hair. I would do kinky twists. Y'all remember kinky twists? Which technically is renamed to like, I don't know, passion twists, but bigger. Um, I used to do, uh, at, back then I didn't really wear wigs like that. I would wear a synthetic wig every now and then, but wigs was not really big back in like the 2010s. So two strand twists, braids. I had a pompadour style that I would wear on occasion. And then sometimes if I was feeling funky, I would literally just wear my hair in what technically would be a wash and go because it would just be like maybe an old twist out. I wore twist outs occasionally. So maybe after a while, maybe after one or two weeks of having a twist out, I would just let it shrink and shrink and shrink. And I would just wear it like that for a couple of days. And we know, or at least back in the day for me, that was the time when I knew I was going to do a bentonite clay treatment because that is where tangles lived. So after wearing my hair and that little shrunken fro, I was like, yeah, I'm not fighting through this. I'm going to put that bentonite clay on my head. And at the time, I would mix bentonite clay with apple cider vinegar, honey, olive oil. I think those were the main three ingredients and maybe some water. And honestly, 20 minutes later, my tangles were melted they were dissolved and honestly i'm not saying that it's a bad solution now but i do feel like there was a thing that has to be said about it number one i felt like you can never fully wash out the bentonite clay and maybe i was doing it wrong back then i would do the bentonite clay that was my cleansing that was my shampoo because you know we didn't do sulfates back in the day my job been natural for 20 years maybe a little bit more so back in the day we didn't do sulfates right so we were doing rasol clay we were doing bentonite clay so that was my shampoo so i would follow that i would try to shampoo it out or wash it out rather uh, as much as possible and then i would follow that with some conditioner and i felt like i still had bentonite clay in my hair constantly and i'm like yo this is not it's not it because you know though my tangles are gone my hair still feels a little bit I don't know what the sensation would be called but it felt some type of way another reason i would say bentonite clay is no longer my solution is because i felt that i need to learn how to detangle my hair like i don't think i should rely on a thing that i do every two to three months to just solve all of my problems but then i'm also dealing with the other things that come with it i am interested if you did bentonite clay or if you are still doing bentonite clay please let us know in the comments. But ultimately, I say this to say, in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about how to actually properly detangle your hair. So I've been a natural hairstylist for eight years now. I've been natural, like I said, for over 20, and I've learned a thing or two about how to detangle the hair without having to use Vince and I clay. So number one, finger detangling. So I feel that finger detangling can be hit or miss and here's what i mean hit, finger detangling has its place and i think depending on your i don't even like to say hair type because just because you're type four doesn't mean you can't do certain things but i will say type four hair does tend to tangle based on my experience in the salon a little bit more than other curl patterns and i would say part of it is because sometimes type four hair tends to be on the finer side Whereas maybe type three hair tends to have a bigger girth to it. Consider like the circumference of a pencil versus a marker. So the pencil would be type four hair and the marker would be type three hair. Finer hair does have a higher chance of tangling. Not everybody, of course, but from my experience, I have seen that when your hair is on the finer side, especially my own hair is honestly on the finer side, my hair is fine it does tend to love to wrap itself around each other, especially when your hair is not only fine, but extremely tightly coiled. So that combination 
is a beautiful combination. However, it can lead to tangles quite easily. So I would say finger detangling may not be your end all. It can be your beginning because you don't want to rip through major tangles with a brush or comb. So it can be your beginning, your baseline, but using finger detangling alone, I don't think is a great solution because what happens is you end up having, a, you end up accumulating a lot of tangles in the hair over time. And then you end up doing what I used to have to do, which was the bentonite clay treatment, or you have to go to a professional and uh, get your hair dematted because so many tangles have accumulated. And I'll be popping in the video of a detangling session that I did get a chance to record of one of my clients who she said she wore wigs for the past, I think she said since 2017, and that is what, seven years. So she doesn't wear her hair. Mind you, her hair was really long. However, she just didn't detangle it properly. So not only does she have matting, but along each strand of her hair was just little itty bitty single strand knots. And that happens with accumulation of tangles. That happens when you don't properly detangle your hair in particular intervals. And I know some people will say like, well, detangling is a lot of manipulation. And I think it depends because number one, if you detangle right, and if you are keeping your ends trimmed, you will not accumulate as many tangles and you won't have these large sessions of tangling. So those are some things to consider when it comes to detangling your hair. Number two, choosing the right products. So I think at this point, we all know about Aussie Moist and we all know how much slip that conditioner uses. I think that is a great place to start when it comes to detangling your hair because you do want to use something that is high slip and honestly inexpensive to detangle your hair. Another thing I would consider is the African Pride pre-shampoo detangler is literally made for pre-shampoo and detangling. I've sent it to clients, I've told clients about it and they love it. I feel that if your hair doesn't work well with that product, maybe it's because there's something already in your hair that is interacting with it that is not causing it to be a good process for you. But in general, I would say those two products are game changers in a sense. There is another one that I used to love, but I have trouble finding it. It is by Talia Wajid. It is, I believe, one of her detanglers as well. It's yellow. And that conditioner is amazing. Ultimately, what I'm telling you is find a good conditioner with some good slip or find a product that is designated to be a detangler and use that before you shampoo. Because honestly, depending on where you are in the process, if you're a once a week shampooer, if you're a once every two weeks shampooer, you have to think your hair is accumulating in tangles. And maybe you don't want to do too much manipulation. So if you're a, I shampoo my hair every week, then maybe finger detangling every week could work. And then maybe once a month you do your deep detangling. But I would say don't neglect detangling. Don't let it accumulate because then you don't want to get into a space where you're having to demat. Dematting is not fun for anybody. Let's say you just got some knotless braids. You put the oil in, you're detangling roots. It's separate. Don't shampoo yet. This is the time to now section your hair, I would say in at least four sections and get that conditioner-based or uh, liquid-based detangler and work it through because you want to have your hair super detangled before you let shampoo touch your hair, especially after wearing a hairstyle in for a long time. I believe this is the fourth thing, but the fourth thing to consider when it comes to detangling your hair and having trouble with it is the fact that you very well may need a trim. Because when your ends are really scraggly and you have a lot of shed hairs at the ends and you have a lot of single strand knots at the ends, you are going to have such a hard time detangling. And it's time for a trim. Honestly, at this point, I'm going to insert a video showing you where a trim was neglected. You had never had a trim in, I believe, seven years. And at this point, we're doing a dematting section and it took almost 90 minutes. I think a little over 90 minutes to detangle her hair. Just detangling. This is not. In, this does not include the shampoo uh, portion. And you want to avoid having to do that because, of course, if she did that herself, she had to detangle that herself. It would have probably taken at least two to three hours. That's not fun. I think those are the things that make natural hair, or what pe what I hear people say, make natural hair unfun. I don't know if unfun is the right terminology, but anyway. I think if you get regular trends, and in another video I talk about 
how I got my hair cut at Supercuts. But if you get regular trims, meaning every three to four months on average, I believe that you will enjoy your wash days so much better because having groomed ends, having ends that are not constantly catching in each other, having ends that are not constantly shedding or tangled is going to make such an easier wash day experience. And of course, it will make your detangling so much easier. And the fifth thing I would say that you need to consider when it comes to detangling is you need patience. I think if you are new to dealing with your own hair or if you're like, okay, this year I am going to learn how to do my hair. I'm going to master my hair. You didn't learn this overnight. You didn't learn the things you did overnight. So you need to learn how to unlearn what you knew before and then take the time to learn the skills it takes to actually master your hair and one of the things I do think natural hair requires is mastering detangling. Because once you learn how to detangle, a lot of things are going to become so much easier. Because if you can detangle your hair well after a wash day, blow drying your hair will be no issue. If you can detangle your hair well after a wash day, then doing two-strand twist set, or even doing two-strand twists, you won't be afraid to keep it in for four weeks. Because you know after four weeks, when you take it down, you know exactly what to do when it comes to detangling. So I think detangling is like a cornerstone to learning how to do natural hair or your own, learning how to maintain your own hair very well. And learning how to maintain your own hair very well, in the beginning, I do believe it requires a bit more patience than you may be willing to give because you are not used to this type of hair texture. You're not used to wearing your hair in a particular way. So you need to give yourself some time and space to actually learn how to work with this hair texture and not be upset about it. Don't be upset about, oh, it shrinks so much or, oh, it's always doing this. Let's learn why it does that. Let's learn the principles of, okay, why does my hair always shrink? Why does my hair always tangle? Why is it always shedding? Once you get down to that nitty gritty for your own cell, we're not worried about anybody else. We're worried about our own hair. So once you figure that out for yourself, I'm telling you, wearing your natural hair will be so much easier. And like I said, detangling is like a cornerstone. It's one of the things you need to know how to do if you decide to take hair into your own hands. It is one of the things you, I feel like it's a requirement to learn how to do when it comes to doing your own hair. So though those are the main principles of detangling, I can just mention a couple of tools that I personally love to use. Number one, I love to use the Cricut comb. It's like a coconut oil comb. I'll insert all of this stuff in the description box below. Um, I'm sure if you're on TikTok, you probably have seen the unbrush. The unbrush became really popular and I had to hop on the bandwagon because I'm like, okay, this is looking like it's making sense. So when I got it, I was like, oh, this actually is making sense. So I ended up getting three for my salon and one for the house. And I think I might get another one just in case. I don't know, just in case it runs out, just in case they start changing things because I feel like they have a new version. And I'm like, look, I want the original. I don't want anything to change. So right now, the unbrush has been my go-to tool when it comes to detangling certain types of air. Because I will say the Cricut comb or that wide tooth detangling comb that I use in the salon, I've been using that for eight years. It is amazing. I love it. However, the unbrush does a different level of detangler. I will, I will say it does a different, a deeper level of detangling than the comb does. Another tool that I used to use was the Felicia Leatherwood brush. And honestly, I still love that brush, but I will say I like it more for defining curls than for detangling. And after using the unbrush, I think it's because of the way the teeth are positioned. I like the fact that the unbrush has a wider base and the teeth are a little bit shorter. Whereas the Felicia Leatherwood, I mean, it is a little tighter packed. I would just say it's way better for um, defining curls for a wash and go or defining curls on a wig. Like, I believe I used it for this wig. The unbrush is not good for defining curls, but it's great. It's a great detangler. Um, another tool that I have seen people use in the past that I actually don't think is good for detangling is the Denman brush. The Denman brush is another tool that I think is too tightly packed. That's why if you're an old school YouTuber, you know, back in the day, we used to remove teeth from the Denman brush to help it to help us detangle better. And I think that's what the unbrush does well. It has more space on the paddle. So it's like, I don't know, it's like the surface area is distributing the tension on your hair better than the Denman is so tightly packed and it's like putting too much tension as you detangle. So if you're using a Denman brush to detangle and you're having a great time, that's great, keep using it. 
But for the people who are struggling to find a tool that works for them, I would start at the unbrush or the Cricut comb. Those are my two go-tos. Or even, I guess, just a white tooth comb. I like that one specifically because it's seamless. It doesn't have any random little slivers on the comb that can possibly catch on your hair. If you use anything, use a seamless comb. Not so wide tooth that it's not catching any tangles though, because there is a such thing as a comb being too wide tooth, I'd say. Um, that's why I do love the unbrush. And again, I wouldn't use the, the Demon brush or the Felicia Leatherwood for specifically detangling. However, those brushes are great for defining curls. They are excellent for defining curls. So knowing the tools and knowing the techniques will help you get a better grip on detangling. If you have any products or tools that you love to use for your detangling, anything that has changed your life, please put it in the comments below so that we can all share with each other and learn more about how to take care of our natural hair. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to like the video because that really helps me. Be sure to subscribe and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.